we're learning from we're learning Tanya and we're learning actually from the text lessons in Tanya, which has been printed and have made available on the Chabad.org site. As you can see the address on the top over here. The lessons in Tanya is actually copyright to the Kohot Publication Society, and I have permission to make use of the text for the sake of the Shiurim and to upload it to YouTube with their permission. So here we go, and we're doing a summary, a very short summary again. At the beginning of the Tanya, we discussed that the soul was administered an oath. When it came into the world, it has to be a tzaddik and not to be a rasha. And then the Bala Tanya, the Alter Rebbe, continued, and he said to us that there are different categories of souls in the world. There's the category of soul of what's called the tzaddik. There's a category of soul that's called a rasha. And there's a category of soul called a benoni. And very briefly, we touched upon this idea that there was this argument that when it comes to, for example, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, that we have a misconception that a tzaddik is somebody whose deeds are greater than their averas. And a rasha is somebody whose averas are greater than their deeds. And a Bainoni is somebody who's in between. But the Alter Rebbe points out over here, this is not entirely true. The concept that we've learned about with regards to the Tzaddik and the Rasha, in the terms of Rosh Hashanah, in terms of Yom Kippur, in terms of the way that we see things in our capacity to understand who is good and who is bad, is that we consider the good person to be somebody whose merits outweigh their demerits, and somebody who's bad demerits outweigh their merits. And a middle person is somebody who's even Stephen, basically. And what happens to him is that when it comes to the period between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, he, he, if he hasn't already been put into the book of life, if he has not yet been uh, assigned into the book of life, he has 10 days in which to work through being the Benoni and either doing extra in order to be put into the book of life because he moves from Benoni to Tzaddik, or, unfortunately, he didn't do as he should, and he went from the stage of Tzaddik, and he went from he went to the stage of Benoni, he went to the stage of the Russia. So then we discussed that this whole concept was difficult to understand, because the Alter Rebbe says to us that a Tzaddik is really somebody whose good nature is such that he never comes to commit an Avera, neither in action nor in thought, nor in speech, in none of the areas of his, the capacity of the garments that, co that cover over the soul, so he doesn't commit any averes whatsoever. Now, when we learned before, there was this great rabbi by the name of Rabba, and Rabba said that he considered himself to be a Benoni, and everybody got a, a little bit upset about this idea, because how can it be that Rabba, who was such a great man, would mistakenly consider himself to be a tzaddik, uh, to be a benoni, when in fact he should be considered a tzaddik. And we said that Rabbi could make a mistake and consider himself to be a benoni, because even to be a benoni, a middle person, a middle of the road person, in terms of the station of the level of the soul, a person is somebody who is involved in Torah study and mitzvah observance all the time. And not only that, but he does not stop studying Torah for a moment. And because of that, Rabbi could mistakenly think of himself as being a Benoni, a middle person, because he himself didn't stop studying Torah ever. So it could be that he was considered a Benoni. But it doesn't make it fair for everybody else who wants to try to work on themselves and understand how can I at least be a Benoni? Because if Rabbi is a Benoni, what chance is there for me to be a Benoni if he himself is a Benoni? If he's a Tzaddik, then I stand the chance of being a Benoni. But if he's a Benoni, what chance will I stand of ever becoming a Benoni myself? Which means I'm stuck with the rank of Rasha, of being considered this evil person in terms of the concept of what is considered by definition to be a Rasha. Not literally that he's an evil person, that the world considers him to be evil, but we mean to say in his station of soul, his soul station where he is situated in love, his soul works on the basis of the thinking process of the Rasha. It does not work on the basis of the thinking process of a Tzaddik. The Tzaddik's mind is completely unique to the Benoni and to the Rasha. You can tell if you're a Tzaddik or not. Or if you want to work out a Benoni or a Rasha, we can talk about it. But if you want to know if you're really a Tzaddik, here's the litmus test. The litmus test is, do you involve yourself 
in goods, in Torah, in mitzvot, you know, 24-7, basically, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Are you involved in Torah and mitzvot? Then let's go one step further. In addition to this, is it that you're involved in action and you're involved in speech and you're involved in thought? If you are involved in all of those matters in a matter of goodness, then you're on the, the, the level of tzaddik. If, on the other hand, sometimes, for example, bad thoughts into your mind, says the Alter Rebbe talking to all of us, if he says, if, if he says to us, if you consider bad thoughts in your mind at any point in time, you're not on the level of tzaddik. The tzaddik's mind is completely unique. He is on a level whereby he even thinks good all the time. He cannot think evil. And so we got to the stage over here where it says in the middle of the page, uh, sorry, yeah, we at the, st the start of the page. About call me Shelohigia le Madregazo. Anybody who did not yet get to this level, meaning this level whereby he is mm, even thinking only good things, even though his merits are greater than his bad deeds, he is not on the level and station of the tzaddik at all. So a person who has not yet reached a level whereby including his thoughts are only on a level of goodness, he has not yet reached the level of tzaddik. In fact, not only has he not reached the level of tzaddik, he has not even attained the level of benoni, as has been demonstrated above. Because to attain the level of benoni, means that a person must be on a level whereby he is completely immersed in Torah and mitzvot observance all day long. In particular, any free moment that he has, he devotes to Torah study. He does not devote to extraneous talk. He does not devote to just going around town and looking at things and just wasting the time away. He's not killing time. On the contrary, all that he does is he studies Torah all the time. If he's on that level, at least he stands the chance of being called a Benoni if he can't make it to the level of Tadik, whereby in his mind, he doesn't even think bad thoughts. Can I but ask I a question? Yes. Okay. Question is, realistically speaking, take, for instance, myself or Deborah. I can't speak for you, of course. I wouldn't. <clears throat> it's, we don't study Torah all the time. Uh, we're not even probably close to that. Right, Deb? So the question becomes, where are we in this whole thing? Okay. The average, the average Jew. The average Jew. That is exactly what the Alter Rebbe wrote his book for. There is a famous teaching that there were three great Rebbe's who lived. One of them, his name was Rabbi Elimelech of Lizinsk. The other one was the Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Shnir Zelman of Liadi. And the third one was Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. And according to the legend, according to the story that we have, the following uh, three rabbis wrote their particular works for the three classes of souls that exist in the world. Now, let's make it clear. The Jewish soul, as we're going to learn about, is a very precious thing. We're not uh, speaking badly of it in any way. We don't want to say that anybody's evil in terms of the way we think of bad, of evil. And the legend goes that Rabbi Nachman wrote his book clearly for Rishayim, for evil people. Again, I want to clarify, this does not mean that the people are evil in the sense that they go around murdering and stealing and uh, destroying people's lives and destroying their own lives and, what, and whatever. We just need to say by the level of the soul that enters into the body, what happens is because of the tests that it's going to undergo, it is granted a soul which is called on the level of Russia. And the legend goes that Rabbi Nachman of Breslov wrote his work Likute Moaran for the sake of the souls who exist on the level of Russia, which means people who are really like regular people who need to just adjust to some spirituality. And indeed, if one looks at how far Breslov Hasidut has uh, got, gone out. It's reached to people who are so far removed from Yiddishkeit, and yet the moment they see his teachings, they suddenly get filled with this love and enjoyment, and they start seeing love in a whole different way. These are the teachings of Rabbi Nachman. On the other hand, 
on the opposite spec on the opposite side of the spectrum, we have Rabbi Elimelech of Lezinsk, who was called and known as the Rebbe of Rebbe's. And the reason is because he's like considered the, the beautiful tzaddik. And he wrote this book called Noam Elimelech. And it said that um, Rabbi Elimelech of Lezinsk wrote his book for the sake of tzaddikim, which means to say for the soul level, for the level of people who are granted this power within their souls to exist on the plane of being called what we speak about over here as the tzaddik, they should study uh, the Noam Elimelech, written by Rabbi Elimelech of Lezinsk. On the other hand, when the Alter Rebbe wrote his book, Tanya, which is known as the Sefer Shel Beinonim, the book of the Beinoni, the book of the middle rank soul, he wrote it for people who would consider themselves to be on that working level, to be in the medium. The Tanya is going to describe to us in great detail exactly who this medium person is. And he's going to tell us the techniques of how to get there. The only way that I can explain it is as follows. When the soul comes down into the world, it is going to undergo a variety of successive stages of what we would call similar to the concept of how the world is created in Tzimtzum, where we had this chain-like descent of the spiritual worlds being created in order to come into this world and ultimately create a physical world. The whole point of Ting Tsum was to bring the infinite into the finite, which means, of course, we still don't exist in infinity. We exist in the finite world. But in order to have some sort of a basis whereby we can connect with God, who is so far removed in an existence called infinity, so this concept of Ting Tsum, of letting in the light in a certain way, that so we can grasp it and ultimately going through these contractions of these spiraling, let's call it spiraling ideas, whereby you have chains, one chain linking to the next, to the next, to the next. And ultimately, there's a, an array of light that's coming in and the ray of light is getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker until ultimately there's existence as we know it and physicality as we know it. When the soul comes down into the world, it too undergoes a variety of let's call it, it has to go through the from the higher worlds until it reaches into this world. But because of the nature of the soul, which is so very precious and so high, souls react to the process in a different manner. Some souls are able to hold on to the power that they have when they are above, and some souls are unable to hold on to that power. As a result of that, the souls that can maintain that power as they come into the world will be able to express themselves and to live on that level of tzaddik. On the other hand, which means the majority of souls, on the other hand, who cannot work through that stage, like that pregnancy, let's call it, whereby the soul has to undergo all of these contractions until eventually it gets manifest into this world, and it undergoes such a, a situation where it can't handle it, then it undergoes a process whereby it can't handle it any longer, and it gets stuck into the physical world, and it feels itself to be living in physicality. The other soul maintains the connection with Hashem. To it, it is constantly connected with Hashem, just as it was connected with Hashem before it came down into a body. For the average soul, however, the soul is unable to cope with the contractions, with the movement as it comes down into the world, and therefore it expresses itself in this world as the Russia. The Alter Rebbe now says, before he started writing his book, he said, I want to write a book for the tzaddikim. I want to tell the tzaddikim what they need to do in the world. Excluding the Noam Elimelech written by Rebbe Elimelech of Lezins, he said he wanted to do that. But when he was thinking about it, he said to himself, in the end of the day, there are only a few tzaddikim in the world. But there are plenty of rishayim, or plenty of souls that are capable of attaining the level of the Beinoni. And therefore, he said, I will write a book in order to help the Beinoni be able to attain his level in the world. We are going to learn two very important concepts in Hasidut, in particular as it's described in uh, Hasidut Chabad, in the Hasidus of Chabad. And the concepts are called Iskafia and Ishafcha. And Iskafia means subjugation, and Ishafcha means turning something over completely. Now, the Tzaddik's role is the Ishafcha where the tzaddik takes something which is negative and he converts it completely around into something positive. But there's a problem for the rasha. The rasha 
is not on the level to be able to take something that's very negative and turn it into something completely positive. But what he can do is he's able to subjugate the bad so that the bad doesn't manifest itself. Now, this is going to be the role of the average Jew. The average Jew is going to be sitting here with a soul that is not working 24-7 in the realm of spirituality. We've got things that we need to do. We need to go shopping. We need to go on vacation. We need to drive cars. We need to, uh, we need to take uh, trips on the plane, different places. And we get carried away with all the things that we're doing until eventually half the day goes by. We didn't study any Torah. But the tzaddik doesn't want to do that. The tzaddik wants to set himself up completely in a lifestyle whereby he will be able to study Torah all day long. Only a person who can feel and understand that concept will know that he's a tzaddik. Meaning, his desire for learning Torah, for practicing mitzvot, is so powerful that the hunger is like the average person who is experiencing a physical hunger and feels the need to have to either purchase food or to make food, or just to prepare the food and to eat it. He is hungry. He needs to eat. But the tzaddik's hunger is for God. He desires nothing more than to cleave to God. And anything that distracts him from that is a distraction and an irritation. So when we speak about this idea, you're asking this question of, but you know, we, we're not on this level. Like, we're not studying Torah all day long. Well, you're correct. We're not. And that is the difference between us being these average souls and the soul of the tzaddik. So that's why we see that there are great souls, like great rebbe's in the world. And I'm just speaking uh, colloquially outside. I'm speaking about the different types of rebbe. You have you had Rebbe Nachman, for example, of Breslov. You had Rebbe Elimelech of Lezinsk and Rebbe Dushia of An Anipol. And you had uh, you and you had the Baal Shem Tov. And you have in, in our generation, let's say, the Lubavitcher Rebbe uh, from our time, in other words. And we have the previous rebbe, and we had his father, and all these different people who were engaged in the service of Hashem all the time. They were involved in Torah study all the time. They were involved in mitzvot observance all the time. They were involved in encouraging their fellow Jew to become closer to Torah all the time. Their thoughts, their speech, and their action was involved in Torah, mitzvot, all day long. They had no other desire than to cleave to Hashem and to bring spirituality into this world. Whereas for the majority of us, we're born into normal families. We're not born into families. You'll notice many, most of the tzaddikim are already born into families whose parents, they were already tzaddikim and whose parents were already tzaddikim. And you'll notice the lineage, in fact, of all these people. Uh, for example, if you take somebody like the Lubavitch Rebbe, because we're learning uh, Chabad Kassidut, so he is a direct descendant going back ultimately to the Alter Rebbe and going back to the Maharal of Prague, going back to Rashi, going back to King David. You see that the lineage goes through tzaddik after tzaddik after tzaddik after tzaddik because one tzaddik is able to bring another tzaddik into the world. But the average person, he doesn't know how to bring a tzaddik into the world. He doesn't know how to bring the soul of a tzaddik into this world. This is the nature of this great soul. And the moment that it's born, already it begins to express itself as a tzaddik. For example, when Moshe Rabbeinu, the great tzaddik, was, was born, immediately the Torah tells us that the, 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 the home was filled with light. The, 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 as he was born, there was light around. It was an experience. Something else was taking place. From the moment he was born, Everything went into action to protect this child so that he would be able to grow up ultimately and redeem the Jewish people. His whole mind was set in the framework of tzaddik. And that is what the Alter Rebbe wants to teach us. He wants to teach us, don't become overwhelmed in arrogance to think, he says to us, that you are the tzaddik. You're not the tzaddik. If you were the tzaddik, you would understand exactly where you are because you'd know exactly that you are the tzaddik. But if you can't keep up with that, pace of life whereby you're studying Torah all day long, you don't really value it to such a degree that you can't tear yourself away from, from Torah. You haven't reached that level. So then at that point in time, you have to realize, who are you? You are the soul that is capable of attaining the level of Benoni. And so I have set up this book for you in order to get you to understand, he says to each one of us, in order to get you to understand what does it mean to be a Benoni. How can you reach the level of becoming the Benoni, the middleman? Our duty is not to become the tzaddik. Our duty is to become the Benoni. 
Of course, we can attain the stage of tzaddik. We can attain the status of tzaddik if we work on ourselves to the highest degree possible and we don't remove ourselves from the study of Torah and we're involved in mitzvot observance all day long and we don't distract ourselves with all sorts of external things. We could attain it theoretically. I should point out, however, that those people who will study the Shara Kigulim will see that the nature of the soul, as the Ari points out, as Yukhan Vital points out, he says that the soul comes down into the world at a certain level. And if you want to attain higher levels, there's a path to take. There's like a ladder. You have to go up one step to the next. It's kind of like I like to describe to people. It's like kind of playing a Space Invaders. Let's say, for example, the kids are playing Space Invaders on the computer. And how it works is you have a ship on the bottom that has to shoot down various things. And when you shoot down all the various things, you get promoted to the next level. And if you succeed more, you get promoted to another level. And at part of that, the ship changes. Sometimes the ship acquires a, a shield. Sometimes the ship that you're using to shoot down all these things, they get something else, whatever it is. We as souls in the world come down at a certain level. But we have the ability to rise above that level. And so long as we're involved in the game, inverted commas, correctly, we are doing the mitzvot as we should, and we are studying the Torah as we should. We can elevate ourselves to much higher levels. But as Reb Chaim Vital points out, there's a certain point whereby you can no longer go forward. And the reason is because there are different levels to the soul. There's a nefesh, there's a ruach, there's a neshama, there's a chaya, there's a yechida. And if you're trying to attain this higher level soul, which you don't have yet, and you can't theoretically get there because you've reached a level of per perfection whereby you can't ascend any further without leaving the world first and coming back again, says Rebbe Chaim Vital in his Shara Gigulim. So at that point in time, and the Bala Tanya will point this out to us in just uh, in, in a short while, meaning not tonight, in a few chapters time, the Bala Tanya is going to point this out to us himself and say that if a person does do what he should, then even though his soul level is not actually on the level of tzaddik, he will be deserving that the soul of a tzaddik will attach itself to him and he will be able to serve God as if he was the tzaddik himself. He will serve God like the tzaddik because the tzaddik will be attached to him and he will then serve God with the powers through the tzaddik who is attached to him. Just as we know, for example, many people know the negative side, but they don't know the positive side. The negative side of this concept is called the dibuk. The dibuk is the concept of this negative soul, a soul that has been sentenced to a problematic stage in the spiritual world. And it comes and attaches itself to a person in this world that could cause great damage to the person. We've heard these stories. You can read them. The Chofetz Chaim himself was involved in the uh, in the removal, in the exor exor exorcism of a uh, soul, a uh, dibuk, from somebody, you can read these stories. Um, Rabbi Yehuda Fataya, the great tzaddik and Mukubal, who lived, who died um, about 80 years ago, and whatever it was, 70, 80 years ago, he too was involved in exorcising Dibukim. These are real stories that take place. One can look on the internet, one can buy the various books. I'm happy to recommend them to you. Read these stories and see this is reality. And this is called the Dibuk. But on the other side, on the side of positivity, there is the soul of the tzaddik who is called the Ibur, which means the pregnancy. And what happens to this tzaddik is that when a person is doing good and he is behaving as he should, but he is unable to overcome to reach the level of tzaddik himself because he can't, his soul level and the body that he's in will not allow him to progress, then at that point in time, the tzaddik Ibur will enter him and he will be able to serve God as if he was a tzaddik. His mind will think different. His actions will behave different. His speech will come out different. He will feel different. Ultimately, we know, for example, another concept where we speak about certain people. We say that they have Ruach HaKodesh. The Tzadikim have Ruach HaKodesh. Now, why is it called Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit? And the answer is because these Tzadikim have acquired that second level of the soul, which they are able to serve Hashem with. They have moved ahead from the lower level soul, which is called nefesh, and they've moved ahead to the ruach. And once a person moves to the level of ruach, whereby the ruach, the second level of the soul, enters into him, he is able to serve Hashem on a much higher degree. He is able to perceive things in the world that other people can't perceive simply because the power of that of his soul has changed. 
He has something unique in his soul. He thinks different. He behaves different. He is different. And he knows and feels that he's different. So the answer to the question that you're asking is that the average person that is alive, if the average person, every average Jew, is existing on this level of nefesh. And within the level of nefesh, he's stuck working on a program in order to improve himself so that he can ra raise himself from one level to the next. But the Alter Rebbe knows better. He knows that there are very few tzaddikim in the world. The majority of people fit into the category and rank of the Rasha. And he therefore says, my duty is to teach how you can become at least a Bainoni. What is the level of Bainoni? That is when a person, although he has a Yetzirah, the Yetzirah never comes out, neither in thought, neither in speech, nor in action. That is exactly the fault. That is the problem that Rabbi had when he said, well, what's the difference between this Bainoni and the Tzaddik? Because it seems to be that the Bainoni and Tzaddik are on the same level. Maybe I'm only a Bainoni. So they said to him, how can you think you're a Bainoni? If you're a Bainoni, none of us will be able to attain this level. So what did he mean? He meant to say that the Bainoni even is a person who is constantly involved in Torah study and mitzvah observance. Let us remember, when we speak about mitzvah observance as well, we mean to say that a person is actively engaged in the concept of in all of your ways, know him, know God. Which means to say, if, for example, I would say, well, if I'm cooking food, then perhaps I'm not on the level of tzaddik because I have to cook food. Maybe, maybe the tzaddik doesn't need to cook food. He sits and studies Torah all day long and uh, he doesn't eat all that much. And then when he goes home, maybe there's some food there and he quickly puts the food together and he eats it. But what about if I'm cooking food? Is there any aspect there of mitzvah observance? Yes, there is. Because if I am going to prepare that food and I'm going to check that there are no uh, worms in the food, there's no creatures that I'm not allowed to eat, and I prepare the food in accordance with the laws of kashrut, and I'm even thinking perhaps as I prepare the food, I have these kavanot, that this is the food that's going to sustain me and give me the energy to serve Hashem, then at that point in time, my whole being is involved in the mitzvah of preparing the food. When I eat food, everybody has to eat. Does that mean that he loses out on the, on the rank of tzaddik because he eats? No. On the contrary, as he eats the food, he begins to think of the kavanot involved in order to process what is happening with the physical food, which contains within it the spiritual sparks, which must be uplifted. And as he begins to chew on the food, he has these kavanot in mind. As he swallows the food, he has the kavanot in mind, which means to say, that a person can serve Hashem all the time through anything that he's doing, if only, of course, he starts to learn Torah and to know how to do that. But if a person didn't do that, for example, he just made the food, he says, I'm going to spend the next two hours and I'm going to prepare this food. Let's turn the oven on. Let's put this here. Let's now uh, put the oil on. Let's put the let's put the spices on, let's turn it over, let's pull it out and see how is it done, let's cut it and check it, you know, and he spends an hour, two hours preparing this dish, and his mind wasn't even connected to Hashem, this person is obviously not on the level of Tzaddik, and he's not even on the level of Benoni, because he's so involved in his private things that he's not yet, not yet at that level. So, again, to answer the question, the point is that at the, at the, end, of the, at the end of the day, uh, the average person, the average Jew in this world is on this level of what's called Rasha, who needs to work on himself to attain the level of Benoni. And the purpose of the book of Tanya is to help us to attain the level of Benoni. Now, if at the same time you want to mix this in with some other Hasidut, for example, like Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, then by all means do so. Because Rabbi Nachman, in his wisdom, was talking to this type of person who is on this level of Russia and he's trying to work himself out of it. Then the Alter Rebbe comes and says, not only that, I'll try to get you to the level of Benoni. And then comes Rebbe Lemelech of Lezins and he says, if you've pulled yourself into Benoni and you think you can do better, study my book, which is written for Tzadikim. And then you will know how to serve Hashem on the level of Tzadik. Of course, there are people who are born as Tzadikim as the, as the Alter Rebbe is pointing out, there are people who are born as Bainonim or who work on themselves to be Bainonim. And then there's the average person who is born as a Rasha. What choice do we have? Don't worry about it. 
Hashem wants us to serve him in the capacity that we have been created. And that's why we see, for example, uh, one person at the age of three puts their fingers on a piano and begins to play piano as if they were one of the greatest composers who lived hundreds of years ago. How did that happen? That at the age of three, they were able to do it. And yet another person is unable to find his way on the keyboard of the piano. He can barely hit the keys. He doesn't know what to do. One person at the age of three picks up a pencil and begins to draw artistically. And another person at the age of 30, all he can do is to draw a stick figure when it comes to a human being. What happened? Because Hashem puts into every soul, soul powers that allow the person to express themselves in the way that they're expressing themselves. One, neither one of them is any greater than the other. The one who draws the stick figure is no less important than the one who at three years old was able to do a portrait that looks like a real person or a beautiful picture, a beautiful landscape. Who knows what? We see it. One need just look in articles, look on YouTube, look on various sites where we see these amazing things from, from children who are born that way. So, so too over here we have that the soul level is how the person is born. Hashem says, you will be born as a tzaddik, and you will be born as a rasha. The tzaddik has a service to Hashem. He needs to turn the bad into the good. Wherever he sees bad, he turns it into good. He himself only has good. Whereas the rasha has no dealings with turning bad into good because it's a tough task. There are many aspects of evil that if the rasha gets involved in it, he will fall. He will collapse. It is better for him to stay away from the evil altogether. This is called iskafia. He needs to, sub he needs to subjugate. The Tanya will explain to us, I know that I'm going on about this all, but the Tanya goes to explain to us later on that when it came to the idea of uh, Yitzchak asking Yaakov, well, he asked that he wanted food prepared for him before he would bless him. And of course, Asaph comes in and uh, Asaph goes, goes out and he goes to prepare the food. And then Yaakov comes in with his food. Now, when he asks for the food, as the, the Balatanya is going to tell us, he says that he wants both the sour food and he wants also the sweet food. He asks for both. Because at the end of the day, there is a unique taste from sour, which is tasty. And there is a unique taste from sweet that is also tasty. So you could, for example, take a cucumber. And the cucumber happens to be a sweet and sour cucumber. Well, if a sour cucumber was something that nobody liked, they would never make the sweet and sour cucumber. Why did they do that? Because the taste of the sweet and the taste of the sour produce something very special. When God created the world, he wants us to attach ourselves to him in accordance with the attributes and the qualities and characteristics that he has given us to serve him. One person is born in the aspect of sour and another person is born in the aspect of sweet. But that doesn't make any person any less in the eyes of God. It just means that for the person who's existing in the world of sour, he needs to know how to serve Hashem as the sour in order to serve Hashem correctly. And the person who serves Hashem in the capacity of sweet must also make sure that he serves Hashem in the capacity of sweet and not sour. Each person needs to serve Hashem in the capacity that he was created to serve Hashem in. And that is what the Tanya is going to tell us. Don't feel bad. You're not a bad person. You didn't do anything wrong. And you think Russia is bad. Russia is not bad at all. Russia is an aspect of soul that God brought into the world that he wants to serve. He wants this person to serve him in accordance with the attributes he's got. And Sadiq is another person that exists in the world. And Hashem wants him in the world as well to perform particular tasks that nobody else will perform. But together they perform the will of Hashem. And this gives Hashem great nachas, the smell, the aroma from the food that is being produced gives Hashem great nachas because he sees in front of him the purpose of his creation. He wants there to be a world where there's free choice and he wants us to serve him in the capacity of the qualities that we have in the best way so that we fulfill the mission that each of us is given. Each of us is given a separate mission. It makes no difference if we find ourselves with qualities that seem less than somebody else. Still, we can serve him in that capacity. A poor person has a test with Hashem. A wealthy person has a test with Hashem. The poor person is not bad. The wealthy person is not good. 
But what I should be saying is I'm creating you. I'm going to put you into a body where you are born to parents who are multi-billionaires. And the other fellow, the other soul, he says, I'm putting you into a body where you are born to parents who are, you know, absolutely poor. They have absolutely nothing. But you are both to serve me. The poor man will serve Hashem in the capacity as a poor man, and he will be faced with various tests as a poor man. It doesn't make him bad. And the wealthy man will serve Hashem in the capacity as the wealthy man. And it doesn't make him any good unless he serves Hashem in the correct way according to his station in life. So, so too we have here the tzaddik and the rasha. When we look at ourselves, you can classify yourself as whatever you want to. But I know where I stand. I don't stand on the level of tzaddik. And I don't stand on the level of Bainoni. I'm on the level of the rasha. I'm trying to work on myself to try and understand how do we get to this level of Bainoni? It's tough. But that's all right. It doesn't make me a bad person. What it does is it says your challenge is one that is related to subjugating the bad, whereas somebody else's challenge is to take the bad and to actually turn it into good. You take the darkness and you do something that effectively turns it into light. If we take somebody again, like the Rebbe, or that you can take any, you can take many of the Rebbe's who do this, but on different degrees, people like uh, Rabbi Yisrael, Abu Katsira, the Baba Sali, people like Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, the Mekubal, died uh, 13 years ago. All these people that we speak about were all tzaddikim, and they had one beautiful quality to them that the average person doesn't have, and that is that when they gave a bracha, it was fulfilled. Why? Because they took the bad, they saw that there was a problem, and mystically, they were able to turn the problem, the darkness, into light. Not all of us can do that. We can try. We can work on it. But the greatest thing that we can do is to make sure that the evil does not manifest itself. When we see that we are challenged with something that is bad, we need to work on it in a way that, so that the bad doesn't come out. And when we see some, and, and, and the tzaddik, on the other hand, like the wealthy person, the wealthy person has the test of making sure that people who are poor have money. And the poor person has to work on the fact that even though he doesn't have money, he has to still be satisfied with what he's got. And he has to realize there's not much more that he can do except for what he can do with the little money that he has. So these are the ideas that we're going to see in, in, the, in the near future. And this all comes about, of course, because we said over here that anybody who didn't yet get to this level of the tzaddik, where, uh, and, he, and even though his merits are greater than his debits, so he's not at the level of tzaddik. And therefore, I'll just read this one line here. It says, V'lachain amru raboseinu zal midrash. And therefore, our rabbi said in the midrash, Ra'a ha-kodesh baruch hu b'tzaddikim, sheheim mu'atim. The ha-kodesh baruch hu saw that the tzaddikim are small, meaning that there are only a few of them, meaning he created these souls of tzaddikim in a minimal amount. Ahmad v'shatlan b'chol dovador. He stood up, or he set up, and he planted them in each generation, which means to say that Hashem took these souls, these very unique souls, and he puts only a small amount of them into each generation, whereas the generation is mostly filled with the souls of the Rishaim, who can become potentially these Bain or Nim, but the Tzadikim, the souls of these great men, according to this reference over here, is that there are only a few of the tzaddikim. And at the end of the day, God says, I will plant a few of them in each generation. And those few will take care of the generation in the ways that they can. And that's what God wants in the world. He wants it to be these few outstandingly great people. And for the rest of the generation, there are standard people, let's say. But it doesn't make them any worse. It just means that their task is a task that involves subjugation in comparison to the tzaddik's role which is a role of turning that negativity, turning the darkness into light. Each of us in our own capacities can see, we know if we're involved in the schmutz, if we're involved in problematic areas that pull us down, it's a sign that we need to work on it in order to subjugate it so that the negative doesn't come out. But if you find yourself one day waking up and there's no negative thoughts, and you don't say a word of bad about anybody or anything or cursing anybody, or uh, anything even on, your, on yourself. You don't say any negative words. You only use words as is necessary. Then, and then you see that the deeds that you're doing are all good. You never come up to do a bad deed ever. Just goodness to people, wherever you see them, whatever their situation, good, good, good. 
then you know you're working on the level of the tzaddik.